it's January the 13th. Um, I am just back from home visits this morning. I've got about 40 minutes at home uh, before I have to go out and do some more home visits. And it is such a glorious day. I just wanted to get out into the garden. I don't actually know what I'm going to do just yet. Um, I haven't planned it. I just, I just need to spend some time outside soaking up some sun rays. So, um, I've got a compost bin that I need to empty. I've just got like the food kind of potato peeling sort of bin that we've got in the kitchen that I need to empty. So I'm going to do that. And also, now that it's actually sunny, I'm going to show you my cold frame in use. So I'm just going to come around here and I'm going to give you a better. Can you see that? I've got all the tomatoes in there. Not tomatoes, strawberries. What am I talking about? Strawberries in there. Um, and it's really good. It actually has far more storage space than I thought it ha would have. It, it's deceptively large. It's, it, um, one thing that I have discovered though, and I need to be a little bit careful about, is actually it gets stinking hot in there. I've left the window open. Um, and I'm starting to question my wisdom of putting the strawberries in there. I mean, there's, it's so hot in there. It must be about 25 degrees, maybe more, um, when the window wasn't open, that I'm at risk of just bringing the strawberries on far too quickly. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the strawberries in there for a week to allow the little, the little runners um, to have a chance at growing some roots um, and maybe a little leaf or two um, but then I really need to start cooling them down because they're going to be ready far too early if I leave them in there at that temperature so um, yes there's some windows on on the um, cold frame so that's good in that I can control the temperature slightly um, but that requires me to remember every day to open and close the window and I'm just not that good I don't think. Okay um, I've decided what I'm going to do today is going to be quite quick I just want to plant some plants um, so firstly I wanted to show you that my garden saboteur has been hard at work digging some holes um, she's probably pest um, I think she might have actually damaged the agapanther, so I'm going to have to have a little bit of a look. So I was thinking, what can I put in? And I have a pot here. I'm 99% certain that there are grape hyacinth bulbs in this pot. My lovely sister-in-law gave these to me um, a few years ago, and I haven't planted them up. Now I know great hyacinths, what great hyacinths, when they get going, can really spread like weeds. Um, so if they get established well and Maisie doesn't ruin them, I'm going to have to be fairly brutal in the coming years on weeding them out because I do not want, I do not want six meters of great hyacinths and nothing else. Okay, but I'm going to put them in. See what happens. Well, there's definitely some bulbs in here because can you see them? They're starting to poke up. I'm going to have to try and keep Maisie off these. Maisie likes digging where I've already dug. I have discovered because the soil is already loose and the problem with that is as soon as I've planted any bulbs she digs them up and it's not because she wants to dig the bulbs up particularly it's just that that's the easiest soil to dig um, so she is going to need some supervision in the garden right, I'm going to pop this in here <laughs> few 
other plants that I quite like to plant. I've actually got quite a few that need planting up, but I've just got one more that I'd like to focus on today. Um, and it's down in the, it's currently in the front garden. Um, I'm just gonna get it and then show it to you. Okay, well, this is saboteur hole number two, which I tried to fill in the other day and then discovered that Maisie had so liberally spread the soil around that I couldn't easily find enough soil to fill the hole in, um, which is annoying. But never mind, we've got some stuff that I'd like to plant up. Now, these are some cyclamen and they actually have really high sentimental value um my big papa used to live in scone um, and he used to quite like his garden and in his garden he used to have some cyclamen and these are probably their great great grandchildren in plant for <laughs> plant version um one year we took up a load of cyclamen and we brought them back home and we planted them at my parents house um, and these are actually from my parents house not from papa's house but they're the same they're the same cyclamen and papa's no longer with us but it's when i see them they just remind me of papa and being up there in the february half term and kind of going on cold wet muddy dog walks and snowball fights and all things lovely um, so we're going to plant these up and God help Mary, um, Mary, Maisie, God help Maisie if she destroys them. Um, so unfortunately these were sitting by our front door and uh, we have a disabled dog, dog ramp um, up the side of the house because Izzy is struggling with the stairs and one of the other dogs got kind of twitched as they were coming down the stairs and accidentally trod on the pot and it fell off the stairs which is how it's got into a bit of a mess in the first place but we're going to plant them up i'm sure they'll be fine they seem to be as tough as old boots and even if they're not fine mum's got a carpet of these now in her house so i'm sure she won't mind if i go and take a few if they die right let's get started shall we I've just discovered something I did not know and that was there are a load of bulbs in this plant pot that have been disrupted I have no idea what they are I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try and shimmy them back in and put some more compost on top because I don't really want to transplant bulbs mid growing season I don't see that being generally very successful. The only other thing that I'd like to plant up is I bought this in the sale. Um, um, and I always think that Astrantia are really pretty, lovely, delicate flowers. Um, and like all my good intentions, they never always come to pass. So I bought it thinking, oh, I'll plant it up. And then I think I had flu for like four weeks um, in a row and nothing happened. And I don't know whether it's too late, but I'm going to plant it up now. And we'll just see. I really hope it does come up because it's absolutely beautiful. I love the delicate purpley stars that it produces. So got a good root ball 
maybe slightly pot bound, but you know, nothing that it can't survive, hopefully. Where are we going to put it? I think I'm going to put it over there because around here you can't actually see very much, but there's a load of um, ballerina uh, flowers and also Canterbury bells. Um, in that area and they'll come up later in the year and I think it's already pretty crowded whereas down that end the only thing it's pretty crowded is with buttercup weeds so gosh holding cold soil in your hand is jolly cold right excellent Right, that's my three o'clock alarm just gone off to tell me that I really better go and get changed back into my work clothes um, and go to my next patient. So thanks for joining me. I think that was a plant pot's worth of work, wasn't it? It wasn't masses, but you know, just a little bit every day wins the race. Good evening, um, it's late at night um, and I just thought I would show you what I'm doing. Um, there are some disadvantages in having house plants in the house in the numbers that we've got them um, is that you get lots of these little black flies flying around and so to combat that we have a fly catching plant I find that it's not actually that good at keeping the fly population down although it does allay my guilt when I kill a fly and I feed it to it so I have just killed three um, and this is my ritual is that I get the flies and then I try not very successful at doing this dropping it into the little cups the little pictures on the um, on the um, picture plant have water in the bottom, or well, like the fluid in the bottom of them, and when the flies crawl down, they get stuck, and then they decompose it. They break down the fly, and they extract the nitrogen and protein from the flies. So this one is doing so well, not because it is a great fly catcher, but because I feed it. <laughs> Ashamed to admit it, but it's true. Good evening. It's Saturday the 15th of January. And this evening I spent a couple of hours doing some macrame. Before Christmas, I started a macrame project and no pun intended I got myself in a tangle um I started it and I just I, I just couldn't work it out I was getting so confused um and I got in my head that I just couldn't do it I just couldn't do it um so I didn't actually start filming um when I started this project today um I've been struggling with anxiety all day today and I just wasn't in a good place to start filming when I started but I am so <laughs> proud of myself not only have I done a little bit I have completely finished it and it was so much easier than I thought it was going to be so much smaller and so much less of a problem than I had made it out to be in my head so, without further ado, I'm going to show you.
I am absolutely tickled pink um, that I have succeeded in doing this. I'm really pleased with it. I'm just so proud that I managed to do something today. I'm just going to bring it a bit closer so you can see what I've done. I've got some lovely little wooden bead um, detailing. Oh, I've got a lovely little tassel. Not so keen on the plant. Um, I've actually got a um, string of pearls plant that I um, plan to put in it. But the string of pearls plant is quite delicate and is currently being watered. So um, that's a job for tomorrow. Also, I'd like to go and get a hook so I can properly hang it. This is just being hung on the curtain rail just now. But I am just so proud of myself. <laughs> Um, and I'm definitely going to be making more because it was really, once I got over the fear of it not being perfect, it was so therapeutic and it was just fun. It, it was just really good.